the way you hold your knife, the way we dance till three, the way you've changed my life. No, no, they can't take that away from me. No, they can't take that away from me. Fred's problems with Ginger are nothing compared to Scott's with Dunn. First, his ex-girl arrives in Paris, and he breaks Dunn's heart. He finally gets rid of his nasty ex, but then in a drunken rage, loses Dunn, too. This leads to Dunn singing, The Beautiful, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. And I hope we'll get enough friends for you to dine with me tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Tomorrow night. I'm very sorry. I'll tell you, the night hook opens at the Café Russe. All right. Gee, that'll be swell. Hello, Sophie. John. You're awfully hard to see since you became a couturier. Not for you, Sophie. When did you arrive in Paris? This morning. How long are you going to stay? Oh, hello, Uncle Barry. Hello, Soph. Mother and I are going to Switzerland on Saturday. Goodbye, John. I'll see you Sunday. Oh, John. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, come in, Stephanie. But I'll say Wednesday for you. Luncheon, dinner, and the evening. That's fine. It's a date. Is Miss Teal's personality in there? Yes, yeah, right in there. I'll go and torment her a while. This gown has both chic and good breeding. I'm more interested in its chic. I can supply the breeding myself. I know the dress. Look, Stephanie. You know that one uh, that, that uh, it, it sort of begins, and then in, in, in the, in the, you know, the black one. Black one? Yes, the one you put aside. She's going to like it. When John sees her in it, oh boy, he's going to make her walk home ocean and all. No, he won't. He's in love with her. Oh, he only thinks he is. Um, if he were, would you mind? I am minding Huck. Terribly. It's been discarded. It wasn't put aside for anyone. Huck was mistaken about that. You're not a very good sales lady. The more I think of it, the more I'm sure the dress will bring out something elegantly alluring in you. Got the new dress on, Soph? Certainly. You don't know it, but this is a great moment in my life. <laughs> I'm afraid he won't like it. And why not? He thinks everything I wear is perfect. If I ever ask him how he likes a dress, he just looks at me with calf eyes and says, gee, darling, you look swell. He won't say it about that one. How do you like it? Isn't it a knockout? It's the worst looking thing I ever saw. Who sold it to you? Your partner. She thought it brought out something elegantly alluring in me. I will not send it back. It's the smartest thing in your shop. What do you know about clothes, anyway? You make yourself ridiculous by even discussing them. You've bowled me out for the last time. I've stood for all your knocking and criticism because it sounded so cute coming from such a little snip. And because I thought I loved you. Oh, you thought you loved me. Yes, and what a sap you've made of me. Well, it certainly didn't take much effort. Your Highness, it's a great honor. Down France rates a lot of trouble. You are going to sing for us. Oh, am I? Yes. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, All right.
Well, what have you got to say? I've nothing to say. Oh, you have nothing to say. Well, I have, and I think it was a sneaking thing to do. Telling Sophie she looked elegantly alluring in an ugly vulgar. Please, John, tomorrow. No, I want it out. Now. All right, I'll tell you. I sold her that vulgar, tasteless dress because I thought it suited her perfectly. I think she suits you perfectly. I think you're perfectly matched. And after this, you'd better count on running your business without me. Please like and subscribe.